Life is a magnificent tapestry, woven with threads of beauty, purpose, and challenges. Each moment is a brushstroke on the canvas of our existence, yet so many of us walk through life burdened by invisible chains. These chains, fear, doubt, regret, bind us not because they are unbreakable, but because we believe they are. We carry the weight of our past, the opinions of others, the limitations we place on ourselves, the imbalance in our relationships, and the overwhelming pursuit of wealth. These forces, often unseen, dictate our choices and overshadow the joy and freedom that God intended for us. Consider the story of a butterfly. Before it soars through the skies, it must endure the confines of its cocoon. The struggle to emerge is what gives it the strength to fly. Similarly, life challenges us not to break us, but to prepare us for the heights we are meant to reach. Yet, unlike the butterfly, we often let the cocoon of fear and uncertainty define us, forgetting that we were designed to soar. Today, I invite you to pause and reflect. What chains are holding you back? Is it the shadow of past mistakes? The need for approval? The voice of self-doubt whispering that you are not enough? Whatever it may be, recognize that you hold the key to your freedom. Through faith, resilience, and love, you can reclaim the life you were meant to live, a life not dictated by circumstances but shaped by purpose. Let us embark on this journey together, shedding the weight that hinders us and embracing the promise of a life filled with hope and meaning. The path may not always be easy, but with every step, you draw closer to the freedom your soul craves. Let faith be your compass, resilience your armor, and love your guiding light. The journey to freedom begins now. The past can be a gentle teacher or a relentless jailer. For many, the latter is true. Painful memories, failures, or betrayals linger like shadows, blocking the light of hope. But we must remember the words of Isaiah chapter 43, 18-19. Forget the former things, do not dwell on the past. See, I am doing a new thing. Now it springs up, do you not perceive it? Let me tell you about Sarah, a woman I met years ago. Her life was marked by heartache, a childhood filled with neglect, a marriage ending in betrayal, and years spent blaming herself for circumstances beyond her control. But one day, Sarah decided enough was enough. She wrote down every painful memory and burned the pages in a small bonfire, symbolizing her release. From that moment, she began focusing on the future. She took up painting, started volunteering, and even opened her own gallery. Her past became the soil in which her new life grew. Like Sarah, we must leave the pain of the past behind. By doing so, we make room for the blessings that God has prepared for us. Every morning brings a new opportunity to start afresh, unburdened by yesterday's troubles. In a world where the cacophony of opinions is amplified by social media, it is all too easy to lose sight of our true selves. Every post, every comment, every like becomes a mirror reflecting not who we are, but who we think the world wants us to be. The need for validation often becomes a silent master, subtly dictating our choices, our aspirations, and even our happiness. Yet, as C.S. Lewis so wisely reminds us, don't let your happiness depend on something you may lose. Imagine the weight of living a life scripted by others, much like John, the young musician. His heart beat to the rhythm of melodies he longed to share with the world. But the voices around him drowned out his own. Music is a hobby, not a career, his family said, urging him to take over the family business. Conflicted, John wrestled with the fear of disappointing his loved ones. Each passing day felt like a betrayal of his dreams, until he stumbled upon the words in Galatians chapter 1, 10. Am I now trying to win the approval of human beings, or of God? If I was still trying to please people, I would not be a servant of Christ. In that moment, John found clarity. His dreams were not mere whims, they were a calling. He realized that the Creator had placed within him a unique gift, not to be hidden or dismissed, but to be nurtured and shared. With renewed courage, John chose to honor that calling, and his music began to resonate with countless souls, bringing inspiration and joy to many. His journey wasn't just about achieving success, it was about discovering fulfillment in being true to himself. We, too, must remember that we are fearfully and wonderfully made each with a purpose that cannot be replicated. Our light was never meant to blend into the dimness of conformity. 
Instead, we are called to shine boldly, illuminating the path for others while remaining anchored in the truth of who we are. Let us release the need for external validation and walk confidently in the purpose God has designed uniquely for each of us. The greatest battle we face is not fought on distant fields or in external conflicts, it rages silently within the confines of our own minds. Fear whispers lies, convincing us that failure is inevitable. Self-doubt erects invisible walls, keeping us from stepping into our purpose. These battles can be crippling, leaving us stuck in the safety of the familiar. Yet, as the wisdom of the ages tells us, when there is no enemy within, the enemy outside can do you no harm. The key to victory lies in recognizing that these inner foes, though formidable, are not insurmountable. Take Mary's story, for example. A dedicated schoolteacher by day. Mary harbored a secret dream of becoming an author. Her mind brimmed with stories that she longed to share, yet she was her own harshest critic. What if my writing isn't good enough, she thought. The fear of rejection kept her dream locked away, gathering dust in the attic of her heart. But one evening, as she sat in quiet reflection, her eyes fell upon the words of Mark 9, 23. Everything is possible for one who believes. Something stirred within her, a flicker of hope that grew into a spark of determination. Tentatively at first, Mary began writing in the stillness of her evenings. The words that had once felt elusive began to flow. Her first book was modestly received, but she refused to let early struggles define her. Each story she wrote became a step on a ladder leading her closer to her dreams. Years later, Mary's books became international bestsellers, her words touching lives across the globe. Her victory was not just in her success but in the transformation of her belief in what was possible. Mary's journey teaches us that the path to greatness begins with a single, resolute decision, to believe. When we cast aside self-doubt and embrace faith, we unlock a power within ourselves that is greater than any challenge we face. As Philippians chapter 4, 13 reminds us, I can do all this through him who gives me strength. Our potential is not limited by circumstance, it is boundless, waiting to be unleashed. Change begins the moment we decide to see our obstacles not as barriers, but as stepping stones. So let us rise, conquer the battle within, and embrace the abundant life that awaits us, armed with the unwavering belief that through God, all things are possible. Love and connection are the essence of life, but they should not define our self-worth. Depending on others for happiness can lead to heartache. As 1 Corinthians chapter 13, 4-7 reminds us, Love is patient, love is kind. It does not envy, it does not boast, it is not proud. It does not dishonor others, it is not self-seeking. Quote dot, Rebecca, a dear friend, spent years in toxic relationships, convinced she needed someone else to complete her. It wasn't until she started attending a women's Bible study group that she realized her true worth. Surrounded by a supportive community, Rebecca learned to find joy within herself and God. She eventually met a partner who cherished her for who she was, but by then, she was already complete. True love begins when we love ourselves and recognize the divine love that surrounds us. Relationships should enhance our lives, not define them. Money is a tool, a resource meant to be stewarded with wisdom and purpose. Yet, in the pursuit of financial security or success, it often becomes an idol, dictating decisions, priorities, and even relationships. Many lose sight of the true purpose of wealth, to serve, to bless, and to build a legacy rooted in goodness. Proverbs chapter 3, 9-10 reminds us of this divine principle. Honor the Lord with your wealth, with the first fruits of all your crops. Then your barns will be filled to overflowing. The secret to true abundance lies not in how much we acquire, but in how much we give. Mark's story illustrates this truth beautifully. As a young entrepreneur, his vision was clear but narrow, make as much money as possible. He measured success in dollar signs and believed that the more he accumulated, the happier he would be. And on the surface, he succeeded. His business grew rapidly, his bank account swelled, and accolades followed. Yet, the emptiness he felt gnawed at him. Despite his outward success, he felt unfulfilled. 
One day, during a routine business lunch, a mentor posed a simple yet profound question, what difference are you making in the lives of others? Mark was taken aback. The mentor continued, focus on serving others, on solving their problems and uplifting their lives. When you lead with generosity and impact, success will follow. This advice planted a seed in Mark's heart. He began to reimagine his business, prioritizing quality, ethics, and genuine service. As Mark implemented this new approach, something remarkable happened. His products resonated deeply with people, creating loyalty and trust. The shift from accumulation to contribution not only revitalized his business but also gave Mark a renewed sense of purpose. He realized that true wealth isn't measured by numbers in a bank account, but by the lives touched, the smiles created, and the opportunities enabled. This principle echoes throughout scripture. In 2 Corinthians chapter 9, 6-7, Paul writes, Whoever sows sparingly will also reap sparingly, and whoever sows generously will also reap generously. Each of you should give what you have decided in your heart to give, not reluctantly or under compulsion, for God loves a cheerful giver. When we release the grip of greed and approach money with gratitude and stewardship, we unlock its true potential. Wealth becomes not a trap but a tool, one that can heal wounds, create opportunities, and build bridges. Let us shift our perspective, viewing money not as the master of our decisions, but as a servant to our purpose. In doing so, we will find that the barns of our hearts, filled with love, joy, and meaning, will always overflow. Freedom is not the absence of trials but the presence of unwavering courage and faith in the face of them. Life's challenges are not obstacles to be avoided but opportunities to grow, to learn, and to transform. When we let go of the chains that bind us, the weight of the past, the fear of judgment, the voice of self-doubt, the need for validation in unhealthy relationships, and the relentless chase for money, we make room for the abundant life God has designed for us. True freedom is not about running away from the storms but finding peace and purpose within them. Paul's words in Romans chapter 12, to offer a profound invitation. Do not conform to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Then you will be able to test and approve what God's will is, is good. Pleasing and perfect will. This renewal begins when we release worldly expectations and surrender to a higher calling. It is not an easy journey, but it is one that leads to a life of purpose and fulfillment. Consider the transformation that occurs when a caterpillar becomes a butterfly. The process is not without struggle, the cocoon is dark, confining, and lonely. Yet, it is within this very struggle that the butterfly's wings are strengthened. Without the challenge, there would be no flight. Similarly, our struggles are not punishments but preparations, shaping us for the greater plans God has in store. As you stand on the threshold of change, I encourage you to make a bold choice. Choose faith over fear, trusting that God's promises are greater than your doubts. Choose love over resentment, knowing that forgiveness frees not only others but also your own heart. Choose purpose over passivity, recognizing that every small step you take is a testament to your courage and resilience. The life you dream of, the freedom you long for, is within your reach. It begins with a single decision to take that first step, to embrace the transformation waiting within you. Remember the words of Jeremiah 29, 11. For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans to prosper you and not to harm you, plans to give you hope and a future. Step forward with courage, knowing you are not alone. Let faith guide your path, let love fill your heart, and let purpose define your journey. The best chapters of your story are still being written, begin today, and write them boldly.